experience of walking into a room, a sports event is being broadcast on television. You can look at the screen and with the sound off, if they focus in close on a participant, you can read their body language. You can distinguish the thrill of victory from the agony of defeat, <laughs> no problem. By the same token, when you visit someone who is ill in the hospital or in their home, they can read you like a book. They and their family can make observations about your sincerity and about your comfort level with being there. So the first thing that I want all of you to think about before you make such a visit is whether you are the right person to be going. Are you going to be able to maintain a neutral facial expression in the face of unpleasant odors or things that might be disturbing to you? Embarrassing situations such as someone exposing a little too much skin <laughs> while they're in the bed and they're drugged and unaware of what is being exposed. You need to be thinking about whether you can handle that sort of thing and if you cannot, you should probably send a card instead. But assuming <laughs> that you have determined that you are the right person for this assignment, it's very good and polite to contact them by phone first and make sure that the time that you are wanting to visit would be a good time. And you can tell from their end of the conversation, perhaps, if they would welcome a visit from you. So now we are at the hospital room, and you're approaching the door, and you're going to knock, and you're going to pause and wait one moment, and then you're going to knock again and wait to see if you get a response. There are all kinds of things that could be happening behind that door. Bath time, conference with the physician on next steps, family members engaged in some type of discussion where they're not hearing the knock, or the person could be down in another department for a procedure. So my recommendation is if you're in the hospital, you go find a nurse and gain admittance to the room, and maybe she can inform you if there is a reason that this would not be a good time for your visit. So now that you have been given admittance into the room, I want to demonstrate the best way to approach the person who is in the room. You're going to stride slowly but confidently without hesitation, and you're going to stop about three feet from them and just pause because they may need to get ready to see you. You don't want to invade their bubble. They have nowhere to go. It's not a good look from their perspective to see the underside of your net hovering over them. So not appreciated. So as you're there, you are going to look at their face and you're going to assess whether or not they seem to possibly not want to see you. Such as if they're grimacing, like they're in pain, maybe you should suggest that you could return at another time. But I want to make you aware that if you have assessed their face and this is a good time for the visit, that you go ahead and assume a seated posture and that you not do the following. Wringing of hands is not a good look. <laughs> Grimace on my face is, is not good. Obviously, I'm, I'm kind of anxious about this situation. And I'm going to suggest a posture that for most women is going to feel a little bit odd. It's going to look good to the person in the bed, but you're going to think very strangely. You need to keep your feet about a foot apart, wide base of support, no crossing of the legs, shoulders relaxed, aim at their face, engage with body language and an open posture. And then you're going to do this with your hands. You're going to extend your palm up toward the ceiling and have your fingers pointed outward. And you're going to place that on top of your knees. No one ever sits like this, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> but you are going to assume this posture. And to the person who is in the bed looking at you, everything about this demonstrates that you're open, that you're willing to hear what they have to say, which may be a very refreshing experience for them. They may not have been listened to while they've been in the hospital. While you are in that seated posture, it's good to remember that this is also not a good look. This is not a good thing to be hanging on to and consulting, texting back to someone who may want to see you. This visit needs to be about you being present with them. 
The other thing that you need to remember is that people in the hospital sometimes are there because they're ill, because <laughs> <laughs> they need medication, and their illness process plus the medication plus the technology that's in the room, beeping, chirping, whistling, and all the distractions of people are coming in and out, it can be a sensory overload experience for them. So be present in the moment, be listening to what they have to say, and give them time to respond to you. It's like a tennis match. If I send the ball across the net and it's received in their court, I need to wait until they send the ball back to me before I speak again. And that whole process may take longer because of their illness. So now I've concluded that the appropriate time for me to stay in this room is for no longer than 10 minutes and I'm estimating that in my head or I have scanned the room to look and locate a timepiece to time the visit and I'm going to get up and before I leave I'm going to approach the person and in this culture it's usually totally appropriate either sex to touch a hand, a forearm, a shoulder and maybe give a gentle squeeze. We as a culture are physically starved touch-wise, and we also have a tendency not to touch people in a reassuring way. And when you're in the hospital experiencing all the vulnerable experiences that you see there, you need to remember that the touch can be re very reassuring. So now that you have heard all of the prescriptions for what is good and what is a good look, I hope you'll remember them when you go visit the next time. Thank you.